And it's it's tabletop tabletop time. Time. That was like a limp dick. Like that was shit. And that's our intro. <laughs> 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 All right, that's staying. Oh, uh, no. <laughs> okay. Because Jazz has experience with <laughs> limp dicks. Um, he said it, not me. Sorry, what? Mm. Mm. This is bad. <laughs> it's really bad. Mm-hmm. And that's on the internet forever. Yeah. Hi, everyone. Uh, uh. So we're just going to have a brief discussion about rules, cogent roleplay rules, which is cool because um, we put up a recent video where we had a discussion. We actually didn't intend to put that up on YouTube, but, but I think great people really enjoyed well, it. Yeah. It was awesome to see people give feedback, and half of that discussion was based around feedback people gave on YouTube. So I figure it's a conversation worth continuing because a lot of you are using the Cogent Roleplay system, which is amazing and an honor to Shad and I who have been investing years in this now. Um, and for you to all, you're helping us alpha test. The alpha's released, so let's mm-hmm. keep it a community thing. It's awesome. I have whiplash. <clears throat> we went from lip dicks to serious discussions. <laughs> <laughs> Whoa. Don't you do that? Like, that's a. F- Are you having trouble getting the image of penises out of your mind, bro? Oh, I struggle with it every day. I know, <laughs> I guess. You get used to it. It's okay. Um, <laughs> all right. <laughs> 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 I'm really people bad need here. hope. <laughs> people need. To, I'm sorry. Um, make <laughs> Filipinos. Sorry. Do you mind? Do you mind if we start? That's what I was referencing. I know. <laughs> it's like we've got to remember the song and just. Um, okay, so I have a, to jump to the discussion. Shad has a couple of things, but I think if if you wouldn't mind bringing them up later, just because they're about things we've already discussed. You know what I mean? No, so I f- no. figure if we... It isn't. It was, I thought it was referencing la- last video. Yeah, it is, but we haven't discussed it. It's, um, no, 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 but if it's yeah. referencing that topic we, of conversation, yeah. I figure it might be interesting to people to touch on a few new things. And I have two suggestions or ideas, uh, or whatever, that I just wanted to mm-hmm. talk about and get your thoughts on. One is regarding... Uh, <laughs> Can you read your own handwriting? Oh. No. Perception rolls. Ah, this is the one that I wanted to talk about as well. Yeah. yeah. Okay. I know where you're going with this. I'm, I'm already yep, here. I have two suggestions regarding perception well, rules. Can you premise the discussion? Okay. If you're if you're going to use it based on the, the super attributes thing. Well, no. The that, comments I have heard in regard to perception, which is why I felt we needed to revisit it, is that people who use um, stealth and deception feel cheated out mm-hmm. of their skills that are done because they, because per- everyone gets huge bonuses on perception mm-hmm. that they find it really difficult to get success with those skills and they feel a bit cheated. Is that where you were going? No, it's okay. worth, well, let's just talk perception, mm-hmm. all yes. things perception, because mm-hmm. this is a, a very inte- core part of the system. It's mm-hmm. everywhere. Okay. That's probably um, one of the biggest discussions that's going on in the forum yeah. at the moment, which is regarding the fact that deception and stealth have a mm-hmm. quite a disadvantage when well, it, everyone gets an inherent bonus to perception. Well, can I qualify the uh, thoughts as to why we initially made the decision? We're reviewing it, but the reason why we made perception so high is because we it's have a so rule often. in Cogent that if a person isn't aware of an opponent, they cannot make a defense roll, which is basically, mm. it's instant death. Yeah. And, and so if someone successfully <laughs> sneaks up behind someone, mm. they're screwed. Mm. And we felt we had to do it because that's what it would be like It balances it out in the sense that if you are a stealth-based character, you need to be a very good stealth-based character to get the free before free it's OP, yeah. yeah. And, and, and you should still struggle against someone who's highly perceptive. So in a way, it balances well, out. One thing I wanted to bring up before we get into that, because that mm-hmm. is a discussion that could go on in various ways. So I think we'll wait for a moment. But there's one thing I think we could all agree on potentially, but my suggestion is, or my observation is, there's no consequences for failed perception rolls. And I think this is something we should uh, almost- I'm pretty sure he got tackled by a fucking wolf. Yes, no, but this is what I'm trying to say. Um, if you fail a climb check, there is a consequence. It's a narrative failure or it's a practical failure. You fall, you could potentially injure yourself. Yeah, Just let me finish my thought. Yeah. Or you successfully climb and your desired outcome is not achieved. You meet the guards, so on and so forth. Mm-hmm. My thought, my observation or suggestion is that with perception rolls, which are made quite commonly, 
that they, they feel very vanilla and they feel very inconsequential because you either succeed or you fail. If you succeed, you have some sort of inclination of what's happening. My suggestion is that a bad perception role means the narrator will tell you something you perceive or observe that's counterintuitive. Technically, yeah. I actually but, like that idea. You're actually referencing something that I've heard recently in regards to uh, writing in terms of writing novels and stories. Uh, negative information and positive information. Yeah. And so negative information is when you say, and he did nothing. Mm. It doesn't achieve anything. Yeah. Positive information describing what he's actually doing. And so yeah. in terms of perception, the narrator, like negative information, is like, you know, you don't see anything. You're suggesting even on failed roles, he gives positive you information. Always, if you're and seeing, even if it's wrong, mm. you hear something behind that tree over there and really there's nothing there, but the narrator is saying this is what you perceived. I actually really like that yeah. idea. I think, I think it will help mm -hmm. make proactive storytelling an easy reality even if it fails mm -hmm. you know what i mean like i think more so though if if we use this so for example there is one case where we've done that the the um and it worked out really well in rogue star when you were looking for a really good car car yes that's hijack, the first example you failed someone. the perception role yep and, but i told you that uh yeah. you see this awesome car and that was when it was sort of fresh in our minds about narrative failure yeah, we need we, a, i always feel like we need to write in that perception it, it's because perception checks are everywhere yeah. you know why so, you know why this is difficult <laughs> like for myself i am trying to overcome oh, years upon years of dungeons and dragons indoctrination Okay, because D and this is this where is, it stems from. Uh, it really yeah. does, and and we're going to get yeah. to uh, um, when I get my you know my turn as we're talking through the rules. I'm going to mention something that we stuffed up last session, and it's purely because of Dungeons and Dragons. Yeah, ah, but, but it does come right. down to that because mm. they feel so inconsequential, and it does feel like D and D when well, that's how when D &D the narrator says everyone really. make a perception roll, yeah. and it's either you succeed or fail, and mm. the people who succeed are like, okay, what do I see? It's the good thing. Mm -hmm. I honestly feel it's like breaking this mental condition. Yeah, and I honestly feel like to do that success. Successfully, every time a perception roll is made, you perceive something. Yeah. So the narrator gives you something you perceive, and if you roll bad, your character genuinely perceives that. So, and well, it might be if, we walk into a bar and we want to get a scope of the good and the bad of the bar or whatever, right? Mm -hmm. The simple scenario rather than combat or whatever. Everyone you makes a perception you roll. Is a really attractive busty barman. Well, no, like what could? But it's really a man. He'll find could, that out till later. Oh yeah, but I know that. There be are a few. There are a few ways it could unfold, and the good way is obviously you notice the important people, you get mm. a scope of the dangers, right? You know, I yeah. agree completely. The, the negatives could be things. It could, and, and it could be really cool in proactive storytelling. It could be like you you notice someone with a really big nose and large ears, and he looks really odd, and you've you never seen someone like him, and you realise mm. in the whole time you're looking at him and perceiving him. He's watching you look at him, <laughs> and he walk, walks up to you and says, "You got a problem?" You know yeah. what I mean? Yeah. Like a it's low great. roll yeah. automatically puts you in a situation, yeah. as opposed to I perceive and I got nothing. Yeah. You know what I mean? It creates a story event, and that's the whole thing that we want yeah. behind issue. the role. all roles of cogent. My issue with this is obviously I, I like the idea of having like a, a negative on a bad perception roll. So like if you fail it, then something obviously happens still. But you are actually convinced if that I all tell, of If I tell to all of you to roll perception and Mackie rolls a six and you roll a one or a two, mm -hmm. you'll know what I've told him is true. Yeah, but the thing is, that's the onus is on us then, not to metagame. Yeah. And I think yeah. we are mature enough role players to do... do Absolutely. Right. We did it in Rogue Star. Yeah, yeah. I got a bad perception, we jumped out You're of like, the window. You're like, I want that guy! Yeah, and exactly. you knew out of game, it was totally... So it's actually not... About like it's not going to be a problem. I think if you're yeah. if you roll bad, you say whatever as the narrator you say someone perceives they they perceive and act upon if their character would act upon it. The other problem I see with this though is well, so I've got two things here. So first of all, in a narrative basis, if you're going, hey, you've perceived something. Um, yes, the narrator can do. Yes, it actually happened, or no, it didn't really happen. Whatever, but. One problem I think we'll encounter with doing that is we might get distracted by details and then go off story and then... I mean, that is kind of the purpose, but you want to try and keep the story flowing. And I think if we keep stopping and saying, you perceive something in the bushes, someone's going to be on edge about something in that bush and then you're going to be like, I've got to keep an eye on this bush and nothing's happening there. I know you feel like that would be a detriment, that's going to add to the story. Yeah, it's a story element. If you're all running away from a beast coming chasing you down the hall and one person says, shit, they're not behind us again, they're in front of us and turns and runs the other way, 
you think that's counterproductive, but it just channels the story in a completely different direction. And the reason it feels counterproductive when you sort of verbalize it is because everyone has an idea of what the story is going to do. And when that shifts, it's uncomfortable, but you just got to go with it. That's the, okay. the and done. I think we're all converted. Yay. Um, okay. One thing though, we all need to help each other remember that. Yep. Because the thing why, like I failed, I forgot to do this heaps as a narrator going through Rogue Star because of all that bloody D&D &D conditioning. Yep. And so, it, like, what we, we all need to try and remember this and help each other out because that would have helped me out as a narrator and I think it'll help it. So let's try and remember that. Awesome. The other thing I wanted to mention as a potential rule extension. <clears throat> this may sound odd. I'm sounding out the idea want to get your thoughts on what it would be like as a rule if players were allowed to request destiny points for a specific action if they have them or not but there has to be a consequence based on that so what for, so what i mean is yes we have specific destiny point assignments that we can use and burn at any time but if my character is in a situation where something is immediately the most intense thing whatever I, my ca I should have the right... I feel like I, I, I kind of get what you're getting at already. The wolf yeah, so thing. for example, for example, if I meet someone from my past who I wanted to murder, right? Mm -hmm. They appear before me. I've used all my destiny points in a fight or whatever, but that moment is the moment my character has been waiting for forever. And I should be able to say to the narrator, I would like to request one or two destiny points for this encounter. Now, the point I'm trying to make now about mm -hmm. consequences is... If your request is not reasonable to the narrator, there should be detriments. So it should be, it should be, you, you, sh my point is you shouldn't be able to say, can I have two destiny points? Can I have a destiny point? Yeah, if yeah. you it ask for destiny points and you, if the narrator f seriously thinks that no, then you lose a destiny point for asking. You know, I think it See, should I, be an ammunition based thing not like. like that. I think uh, all we need to do, I think it's fine to ask for destiny points, but it's kind of what we're really asking for is in this situation can i please have this kind of advantage because it's really okay. important to my character one e one thing that immediately springs to right uh, to mind as like an example of this would be say in that wolf fight you were about to die mm -hmm. it would be within joss's character if he had no <laughs> destiny points to do something mm. courageous to try and save mm -hmm. you even if that ne negatively affected him so perhaps if that was in the, in place i would let him burn a destiny point to get a, a yeah, flaw or just a flawless hit on this wolf, but in the process, his arm got bitten off. Yeah, I, a, a give and take scenario. I think you That's could possible. almost see. I like that idea far better than penalizing players just for asking. He lost an arm. Yeah, no, no, but <laughs> but just speak, like I don't think you should penalize players just for inquiring if okay. of the possibility. Okay. But I do kind of like the idea that if it's a free destiny point there should be a cost. Mm. And, and, and one destiny point cost. and an arm is probably a bit unbalanced, but if I wanted three, that would make sense. You know what I mean? Like, I think mm -hmm. that there should be a... S destiny... See, the other thing is, I think we're underweighing things because perception, I think we're underweighing because I think it's probably the most important stat that we have in that if you don't perceive someone behind you, as you say, you die. So, like... In that regard, perceptions are, are perceived as being minor because we roll them so often, but potentially it has mm. the um, the result to either keep us in the same spot mm. or completely obliterate an entire area because we've noticed something in the environment. Similar to when you're playing a game, there might be a really hard boss. If you see explosive barrels, you can just blow nice. them up and <laughs> go straight past it. And that's why I think perception is really important. Now, if we go back to destiny points and the same thing, you're saying, well, three points uh, for somebody's arm, but really a destiny point, you're choosing the fate of your character, the difference between literal life and death. So having that one point since the advantage system, I think it probably is equative to an arm because mm. a five point sway, um, like the advantage thing where you get those extra, if you've got six dice and you convert all the threes, you've got an extra potential mm. six chances to to get a winning. So, oh, winning so summarize your point. I think ultimately this idea is something that needs to be tested, but let's put it on the board to be tested. Agreed. Okay. So, and, and we'll just sort of see how it feels yeah. when it comes up. Yeah. I do think, for example, like let's say your character's about to die, you shouldn't be able to say it's with my destiny to stay alive. <laughs> you know, like it's, <laughs> it's but it's as you narrator. say, it Carter's purpose in saving people 
it makes sense. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know, but yeah. Carter wanting to stay alive, that's a, everyone wants to stay alive. We have destiny well, points, and if yeah. you use them too bad, if so we sad. did add it, if it, it aligns with be, the character. Yeah. 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 If we did add it, it will need to have very specific qualifi qualifying. And everyone know, should keep in mind within this group that if they ask Rob, for a destiny point, he might make you lose your arm. So obviously, he's a harsh mistress, and um, <laughs> ask spa do you, sparingly. Do you see Rob as a mistress. Mm. Yes. Careful with your words here. Well, Ta it would be he's a harsh. This brings me back to time. limp dicks. Now, my <laughs> <laughs> uh, <shit>. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. Sorry. That uh, I also segue. <laughs> <laughs> fucking ace. Thank you. I want to bring it back to now last week's conversation. Um, one thing I wanted to clarify as an extension to that rule, can you, and I suggest that you can, burn more than one destiny point to convert twos to wins and then one to wins? For example, if you, I think that would work. If you burn Ooh. three destiny points, you're guaranteed a success in the maximum amount of your rolls. The problem That's is, crazy, but it is if you three, burn yeah. three destiny points, you're guaranteed, basically. Yeah, but Yes, that, but you've burnt that's three why, destiny yeah, points. Thing. I have a hesitation, but then again, it, it makes is sense. three destiny points. And you and we may have a moment. I have two. There may be a moment where I mean, if I meet someone, I need to. You know what I mean? Like it's within my. My, my only concern with that is when you come across players who purposely um, uh, store up and save destiny points. We, Rob did it in Rogue Star. <laughs> How many destiny points did you save? Oh, I think I got it to six at one point. Yeah. The narrator will, of course, have a right to say no. To be okay. fair, I bent through most of them. So we should clarify quickly. that, but yeah. do, do we feel like stacking this? You know, that could might work. work. Yeah, like, that is worth testing as well. Uh, like, we'll need to test it to see, but the other thing you to can be do in is a situation to test it, we'll need destiny okay. points. And we don't have any left because of the last bloody <laughs> encounter. It's not my fault. <laughs> No, kind technically, it kind of is. We, no, we all know it's Lily's fault. Yeah. Yeah. Can stack to the narrator's discretion. Mm -hmm. Okay. Because you could, if that doesn't work as well, we could potentially try scaling in the inverse of how we do strength. So, um, if you wanted to get uh, the two added, for example, you had to use an extra two destiny points. So. To actually get a two counted, you would use three destiny points, and then to get a three uh, all dice counted, you would use four. Mm, so in inverse, inverse to how we no, do strength. Uh, yeah, I think just because uh, we've already been working off spending one destiny points converts three. Um, well, let's just work off that, and we'll see how. It yeah, works. makes but the we, system easier. I yeah. feel like Phil is just referring to you as Diddums now. Who me? Yeah. What are you doing, Phil? <coughs> I think oh. it's. I think it uh, has merit. Okay, so that's everything. <laughs> I'll, that's everything I wanted to talk about. What were well, you gonna? Bring okay. Up? Um. Well, first off, we didn't decide. Do we need to readjust perception to make it more balanced with uh, our stealth deception? I don't think you. I don't think you should receive any of the bonus points. Like, so, if you go up to three strength... Ah, that's what I was going to say. Yep. Yeah. Well, uh, Mackie has well, three points in it, and he should... And, the, and the I agree that, that he'd be fine with that. people that have offered their grievances about it mm -hmm. haven't been... Because this is before that custom rule even came into place. Mm -hmm. And they're feeling a bit gimped that they want to be a stealth character, but because everyone gets all their stat bonuses on their perception roll, that they're always getting beaten. <laughs> now, my... Part of... I have a, one thought about that. That must mean they don't have high That's on those skills. Say. Two they reflex, must... four stealth. You've got a stealthy character who's going like to succeed a lot of the time. If you really want a specialized stealth character who will succeed, you, you need four points on it. Yeah. You'll be like world's best, but if you want to be the classic ninja, that's kind of what you would need, and in my experience, so if you have so two far, points in stealth and one in reflex, and you're complaining that you're not beating enough people with your sneak, then it's you're actually not that special a sneaker. Yeah. You're good, you're but good. you're not the best. And so, so, so maybe we might leave it there at the I moment. I think leave it, but and give us feedback. Of course, more mm. feedback would be appreciated. Um, but my first, I need to know, I because in my experience, when I've played a stealthy character, um, uh, having the four points on. That was ridiculous. Yeah, like it yeah. did the job. It worked in the mm. narrative okay, well. Okay, so, so okay. While we're thing. on that though, just quickly, mm -hmm. uh, and you sort of touched on this, I think yes. If you have, uh, I think your points in attributes should count to your perception checks, mm -hmm. but no ad additional win points if you uh, have more than two. More than two. So, I, because honestly, based on our last discussion, I think we sort of settled on not applying the, the extra skills. wins to skills, but I think you should be able to, to be honest. I think if you're making a grapple roll and you have three or four points in strength, you should be able to add the plus 
the, one uh, or two wins win. to an assist or to to a skill check mm -hmm. or to a unique attribute check that's because it's so obviously a core part of that character so yes it's a bit op but at the same time it's so one-sided in their balance that you just got to outthink them, the other but not to to perception. I mm -hmm. think you that's only to the core that's why it's now line. skills. Yes. Just just answering that some bad juju has asked. If you're wearing armor that is camo, does that add to your stealth? As a narrator, if I had a player that said, uh, "I'm wearing like." I'm wearing camo that I think matches would... the environment. Could I get a bonus? I would be happy to give them an additional, maybe a dice or an even a plus one win for that as I, a circumstantial I think bonus. Yeah, so if did. you're wearing mm. desert camo, you get a mm. plus one to stealth I'm checks in the desert. Pretty sure that's what happened to him when he was sneaking around with a zombie on his face. Oh yeah, yeah, probably. Oh, yeah. Um, and so it's narrative yeah, based. It's, yeah. There's no core rule in for it. In contrast to that, that, I would also give a, a player negative if they're maybe not wearing the right type of clothing mm. for their environment and trying to stealth. So yeah. Good question, and that's the answer. Now, the point that I next want to bring up is directly um, uh, as an extension of the play session last week. Okay, so if uh, you guys are watching this video and you haven't been watching Blood Brothers at the, up to this point, it is Blood Brothers uh, chapters three and four. Is that the ones where we are fighting these wolves, mm -hmm. and uh, we were uh, having a bit of uh, trouble with uh, the skills. Now, what we did is ultimately right because, and what we did is that we didn't worry about it. We could have spent five to ten minutes looking up the actual rule in the book, which would be boring as hell for you guys. Um, and instead, we just said, we'll figure it out later. Let's just keep for what? That. For I'll get to what. So, it yeah, is. get to it. And that is the, but I just want to say that's the right thing to do because it proves an, in, an important point about the cogent system. Story is that, comes first. Exactly. Story comes first. The rules are actually just a construct. Even though we got They're this more rule. Guidelines. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Even though we got mm -hmm. the rules horribly wrong in the circumstance that I'll describe, we still had a great time. The story and if, was awesome. And if you're a narrator in your own campaigns and someone decides to bring up a rule thing and the scenario is unfolded a certain way but they're arguing for something based on rules, you're you're the narrator. You're telling the story, so you actually have the the option to say, well no, that doesn't happen even though Mm -hmm. That's the case. Like this is a different scenario. I've applied my own little rule thing. Like you're God, you know. But it is, of course, important to be fair to players and to mm -hmm. allow them yeah. to, to you know, so reference rules and, and to explain like the thing. When I say we got wrong, uh, what I really mean mean to say is that I you got, got wrong. wrong, and I blame Dungeons and Dragons again. So what is that? You keep alluding to it. Yeah, what, what it's the to? the how the grapple check can be applied in regards to combat, and this also applies aim throw. All right. Now, in D and D, if you're just wrestling with someone and you beat their roll, you can pin them, and that will, I guess, knee jerk. That's how it works. But I realised, no, it's not. That's actually something that we've specifically did not do in Cogent. And because uh, I, after the session, I looked at the rules and remembered, that's what we did. I'm a moron. <laughs> okay. Uh, so clarify. Grapple, in the context of the Cogent rule, is not wrestling at all. Yeah. It is specifically oh. hand strength. So grapple is used for climbing and stuff like that, and no skill at all. And you remember in the stream, I in the in the session, I actually said, "Hang on, we did something about not being able to use skill checks as combat rolls." Which so is what, what you, we were doing. What you could have done. What I should so have you, done. So you would have been doing an unarmed combat roll. Assisting, assisting with, with grapple. grapple. That's what I should have done and yeah. I didn't. Instead, okay. I was using my grapple skill check as, as a combat roll. And trying to assist with another skill. Which is wrong! Bad chat! Bad! Hmm. So well, how it should have you probably died. should have died. <laughs> that no, no, sense. the assist might have helped though because <laughs> what it is, if you want wrestling or something like that, that you take that as a vocation, not a vocation, as a proficiency. You yeah. take it as a proficiency, which is a combat-oriented. So if you want to be a wrestler, training. in that, if you want to get hurt people with your wrestling with your unarmed combat that's a you weapon take, exactly yeah. unarmed combat or wrestling or judo or whatever yeah. and then you can assist it with grapple now I think some yeah. of the confusion it might... would just be unarmed combat yeah because yeah. You just, if you're a grappler you just add grapple yeah. and assist with grapple now technically this is a, is supposed to be how aim throw also works yeah you cannot make combat rolls with aim, aim throw, throw you would have like a proficiency with throwing dagger or shuriken or whatever so if you want to hurt someone it has to be with a, a, with a, a proficiency. proficiency yes but and you can assist with a justifiable yes skills yeah. can assist combat rolls they can never be used as combat rolls which is the exact thing that i was doing in the last session so i got it wrong i'm an idiot there we go 
So good of you to say. Oh no, no. I know I'm an idiot. Trust me, it shouldn't be too much of a surprise. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. right, well, I think that's about it. We've touched on a few important things, and I think we've yeah. we're making well, good progress. Interested thing, in people's feedback and all this stuff, yeah. or thoughts on rooms. one thing. I think the wording, the, the names that we've picked, might be misleading people because we do call grapple the exact same skill as it's called in Dungeons and Dragons. And, uh, and so yeah, but fuck it, Dungeons and Dragons. So also aim throw. When someone says, I've got the skill aim throw and I'm throwing a rock at someone. Yeah, we do. So, so look, it's going to be a, a stumbling process in a way because we're fighting against decades of pre-established yeah, stuff. But yeah, in, all that d, &D in, I played before I played. Before. Yeah. Mm. In essence, though, it's still helpful <clears throat> for people coming into the system if they play D&D, if we don't name it the same thing. Mm -hmm. So at the end of the day, if we can find a justifiable name, so we should does. do it. But if it doesn't make sense, let's leave it for now. But it's mm -hmm. worth. I'll yeah, note okay. that down as a thought. Um, oh my god! Oh my god. So, we our, uh, we're at our highest viewers. Hey! All right. Yay. So that's really it for this uh, rule discussion. <laughs> Quick, video. let's do something constructive. <laughs> <laughs> that's it for the rule discussion portion. Uh, thanks for watching it. Hope we've clarified things and we've got some like, new ideas to test all out right. and try. So that's it for now. YouTube. We'll see you later. That, that is. is. Ciao.